you're about to learn one of the coolest editing effects you can do inside of CapCut, which is using keyframes. This is great for both professional use cases and if you're just looking to make fun videos. And you know I hate long intros, so let's just dive into this video. So let's first start with what keyframes are, and then we will gradually work our way up to keyframe mastery. Keyframes allows you to make changes to all the different elements in your timeline by placing points at different parts in the timeline. If that doesn't make complete sense, hang on, it's usually a lot easier to understand them when you see them in action. So let's go ahead and hop to our first effect, which is the zoom in effect. So for an example, let's go ahead and do a zoom in. As you can see, the camera is slowly zooming in. You'll see a lot of creators do this to increase engagement, add some movement to a stale video. You can also do dramatic zoom ins or dramatic zoom outs. And the way you do that is by placing keyframes closer together. And the way to do a slow zoom in or zoom out is by placing keyframes further apart. Let me show you how this is done in actually in CapCut. So here I am inside of CapCut on my iPad. You can follow along whether you're on desktop or in just the regular mobile app. But we've got a video clip here of me talking. And for a keyframe, you just need to select the video that you want to add a keyframe to and then scroll over to this button here. I'll zoom in. This is the keyframe button. So when you click this, you'll notice in the video clip section, there's now this little diamond here that let us know that we have a keyframe here. It has been placed. And what I'm going to go ahead to do is scroll ahead to the end of this video and by making any change to this video, for example, just cropping in with my fingers, it's going to automatically place a keyframe. So I could click this button or by just taking my fingers and zooming in and letting go, you'll see on the bottom, a keyframe is automatically placed. And what this keyframe is basically doing is saying at this moment in the video, the video needs to be cropped in this far. That's the changes that have been saved to this keyframe. So as a result, this keyframe is saying, hey, the video needs to be cropped in at this point. And all the way at the beginning, the keyframe saying the video needs to be cropped out all the way where it's taking up the full screen, it's going to cause movement. So now when I click play here, the video is going to slowly zoom in to make sure that when it hits this keyframe point, it is at that full cropped in point, which allows us to have this zoom effect. Now, if I wanted this to be a dramatic zoom in, I just need to place the keyframes closer together. So I can zoom in with my fingers on the timeline by just pinching, scroll over, and let's do a bigger zoom in. Because the keyframes are so close together here, and I've placed this keyframe here, and it says at this point, you have to be this far zoomed in in the timeline, it's going to force a very fast zoom in because these points are so close. So when I click play here, it like immediately jolts forward super super fast so depending how spaced out your keyframes are if we kept that same zoom in let's just go place a keyframe here and we'll scroll back to this second one and we're just going to click minus on it so you can actually delete keyframes if you want to now the keyframes are pretty far apart same zoom in amount if we go ahead still the same amount but the keyframes are further apart when we click play it'll do a now a slow zoom in to that amount. So spacing is also key with keyframes. Hopefully that's starting to make sense. If not, I'm sure you're gonna learn it on our next effect, which is being able to do a color shift. So right now inside the timeline, I just have the clip selected. No keyframes have been added. And what I'm gonna do is click the keyframe button over here. And then I'm gonna go down to adjust and I'm just gonna make a simple adjustment. This doesn't have to be dramatic. I'm just gonna literally tick this up to one. No one's gonna notice the difference there. Uh, just so that way the keyframe knows that we plan to adjust the color. Uh, then we're gonna scroll ahead, place another keyframe, and then go back to adjust and turn this saturation all the way down to negative 50. Now we have this black and white uh, situation going on here. Now what's going to happen is because we've told this keyframe at this point, we want saturation to be negative 50. And we already told it at this point that saturation has to be zero, you know, because it's saving all the settings that have happened to the clip. It's all those color settings that have been, it has to be at that keyframe point. Now when we click play, it's going to slowly 
turn to a black and white clip. As you can see, now the whole screen is black and white because of keyframes. If we put those keyframe points closer together, so if we do that and then make the saturation all the way down, now it'll switch to black and white a whole lot faster. We click play, see how quickly it shifted that time because the keyframe points were closer together. And that is how you could do a color shift uh, from color to black and white using keyframes. For our next keyframe effect, let's talk about adjusting the volume up and down for certain sections. So there's actually a few use cases for doing this effect. So for example, in the timeline, I've got some product videos I'm showing and I probably want the music to be loud as I'm showing that there's no talking going on so people can enjoy the music, see the clips. I could also see use cases of this being maybe you're showing a house or maybe you're doing a travel vlog and you're just showing some travel clips, you want some fun music going, but then it gets to a point where you're actually gonna be talking in the video. And now you want the music to go quiet for a bit so people can hear you talking uh, as you share something. And then it goes back to clips where you want the volume to be loud again as you're showing those clips. So you need the volume to go up, down, up, down for all these different parts in your video. Keyframes can actually allow you to adjust the volume. So you can have one track going, you can have the volume go up, down, up, down throughout the entire project. For this example, I'll be avoiding CapCut's music because as I showed in the last video, they have copyrighted content mixed in there, which if you use, could get you in trouble on YouTube. So I'll be using Epidemic Sound, which is the sponsor of this video. The benefit of using Epidemic Sound is you're getting access to over 40,000 plus high quality music tracks that are safe to use in your YouTube videos, your podcast, your Instagram, on TikTok, and more. So let's go ahead and find us on, send it over to CapCut, and then do this effect. So here I am inside of Epidemic Sound's mobile app for iPad, iPhone, Android, or you can just go to epidemicsound.com, and I can immediately sort by genres or even the mood I'm trying to go with. Uh, first, I'm probably gonna start with electronic and dance. I feel like that's the kind of style I wanna go with. And then what I can do is click the filters button up here, and I can actually sort the music by what I'm going for. So I can sort by genres and go what style of electronic music I'm really going for. I'm thinking probably something in the soft house range, so I'm gonna add that. I can also sort this by moods. So maybe if I want something to be a little more laid back or happy or even something dark and epic, I can really sort the music and find the exact thing I'm looking for. I like to choose music that's a bit more laid back, so I'm gonna click that one. And then I can also sort if I want there to be vocals or just the instrumental. I really don't want there to be voices in the background, so I'm just gonna go with instrumental. And now I can view the 223 tracks that have been narrowed down for this. So now I can just go through these, click listen, and kind of explore these tracks and find one I like. All right, I found the song I liked, so all I gotta do is click the three dots here and download it right onto my device. And then what I can do is save it to my files and then from my files app, send it to CapCut, or I can just click the CapCut button right here and that's going to import the audio right into the project that we have open. Now for the effect, what we wanna do is click on the sound and obviously click the keyframe button. At the start is always a good spot, 100% volume, awesome. Then when we get closer to the end, we want it to gradually dip off. So I'm gonna place a keyframe just a little bit before. There we go. And then go right to where we're about to switch over. Click a keyframe again, and then drop this down to something like two. Uh, CapCut's sound is actually kind of a little weird, uh, where you have to get the number really low for it to actually for the volume to get low. So I have it down at two. Um, if your main audio is ever just a little too quiet, you can always click on this and click on volume and turn this up to be a bit louder than the music. Uh, but as long as you're capturing good audio, dropping it down to one or two should be fine. So now when we click play here, let's just take a look. Achieving the cinematic, professional look with your camera or smartphone really comes down to lighting your videos correctly. All right, and that sounds pretty good. I could probably adjust this a little bit further just to get the audio right, but we'll keep going forward. Now we want the volume to go up, so I can place another keyframe. We'll leave it still at where it's at. 
Scroll ahead to right here where we want the volume to be back up at 100%. Um, so we will drag that right there. Check mark. And now when we click play here, we'll hear that volume go up. Or smartphone really comes down to lighting your videos correctly. Boom, we've got that going. Now it could probably make sense where that effect could be useful if you've got both stale clips and you got clips where you're talking. You can use that same soundtrack with the keyframes and adjust the volume up and down. If you're interested in checking out Epidemic Sound, you can try them out free for 30 days with my link in the description. I've personally been using them for years and I cannot recommend them enough. Now let's take a look at moving stickers, photos, text, or even videos in your project with keyframes. So what's interesting is keyframes even work for overlay elements in your project. So for a simple example here, we are gonna go over to stickers down here. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose a simple one here. Maybe what we'll do is use an arrow here and add that camera. on. Just gonna increase the size of this a bit. And what I can actually do is I'm gonna click the keyframe button here and we do something a little different. I'm gonna scroll ahead a bit first and place my next keyframe. And the reason I'm doing that first is I'm gonna take the first little area here with the keyframe and I'm gonna put the sticker up, out of screen. We can't see it anymore. So now when we click play, the keyframe is going to slide down the screen. And what would probably have been better is if the keyframe was like pointing out my play button or something like that but we fixed it now. So now we can scroll ahead, boom, the arrow slides on. And then what I could do is I can place another keyframe, scroll ahead a bit, slide it off the screen to that direction. Sure, why not? And now the sticker moves off the screen. I have caused movement of the stickers and the same applies to if you want photos to slide on and off, videos to slide on and off, text, um, you can do that with keyframes. Now it's also worth mentioning that there is the animation button down here as well. So if you want the, uh, for example, this sticker to just slide on, you could always click one of these transitions and there it slid down just like I had before uh, without having to use keyframes. But if you want something to do something very specifically, you could just use keyframes and actually transitions are made with keyframes. That's how people make transitions is they use keyframes. Uh, so you can use transitions if you want, or if you want to use the keyframes to do, make it do something customized the way you like it, use keyframes. It'll allow you to do that. For the next effect with keyframes, let's talk about tilts. And this one's pretty interesting too. Uh, and I think the probably the better use case is if you're making a scary video and you want the screen to tilt. You can kind of do uh, what they do in those horror movies with tilting the screen. Let me show you how you can do this in CapCut. And you'll actually find this effect to be pretty easy to do. Uh, the first thing you want to do is click the keyframe button and then you want to just pinch to zoom in right away. You want the clip to be somewhat zoomed in in order to do this effect. And then what you want to do is scroll ahead a bit and then with your fingers, simply rotate the video a little bit. So we're just gonna rotate it with our fingers a bit. It also helps to be zoomed in a bit, so that way when you rotate it, you're not seeing the black areas there. So because we're zoomed in a bit, we can probably safely rotate this without it getting too crazy. There we go. And now when we click play, we have this rotation effect to make it off-centered and more eerie. So. That's also a really cool thing you can do with keyframes. Now let's move on to a super cool thing you can do with keyframes, which is animations, possibly Ryan Trahan level animations. So for this example, I found this map of the world here, and I also grabbed a PNG just off of Google of this airplane. So I'm just gonna put this overlay right over the top of our map. And what we can actually do is with keyframes, be able to fly this plane uh, on the map and make it look like a cool kind of travel video. So I'm gonna click on the overlay down here and I'm just gonna resize the plane with my fingers. Uh, and I'm from Wisconsin, so I'm just gonna resize that to be Wisconsin size level airplane. Plop it right there, boom. And what we wanna do is place a keyframe right here of its current position. And then we can scroll ahead and let's just say we're flying the plane to Texas. So we'll drop it over there and it automatically has placed a keyframe here. And now when we click play on this video, 
the airplane, let's unselect it so you can see it in its uh, full glory here. And I'll actually rearrange it a bit so it doesn't fly immediately. Now when we click play, we see it fly across to Texas. So you could almost do a travel style video with animations. But that's just one type of animation. You can take this to a whole nother level. So I found this stock image of this guy in a suit. I'm just gonna click cut out on him, remove background. There we go. Now I just have this gentleman in a suit here. And what I'm actually gonna do is move it way over here so he's just by himself. And then what I'm gonna do is add an overlay of my own face. All right, so here's a dumb photo of me. We're gonna click cut out. We're gonna do remove background. Let it do its work on me. And then what we're gonna do is a customized cut out as well. Um, I'm just going to take the wiper tool here and zoom in. And we're just going to erase the rest of myself except for my head so we can put my head on this guy. There we go. We got this crude head cutting of myself now. We're just gonna put it over the top of this guy. Oh, oh, I've got the riz now. I've got the riz. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add just this blank white clip here uh, of of my head here. There we go. If I really wanted this to look good, I would do some more time erasing my head, but stick with me here. I just want to show you this example. So now what I'm going to do is expand this so it takes up the full screen here. And I'm just going to take a screenshot on my device. You can just click like the power button and the volume up and that should take a screenshot for you. There we go, got the photo. Now I can go back over here and add it as an overlay. There we go. Going to do a quick crop in around myself. Excellent. Now we're gonna remove the background. And there we go. Now we have me in a suit here, able to walk around. And that's literally what we're gonna do with the keyframes. We are going to animate ourselves walking around here. So all I'm gonna do is click keyframe, scroll ahead a little bit. I'm gonna move myself up, down. I'm taking little steps here, up and down. I'm gonna go very slowly, walking across the screen. And now this is what we have using the keyframes. We are animated walking across the screen. Uh, we could do whatever we want with this. And you could literally make fun little animations of just pasting your head onto someone's body, move different characters around the screen and give them voices and stuff like, this is a whole lot of fun. I love doing this inside of CapCut. Or if you wanted, you could record your screen and just use your finger to drag things around like this. I'm a news reporter. All right, let's move to a little bit more of a serious effect here, which is tracking people using keyframes. So I just found this stock clip of people kind of walking by this train here. And what I actually saw is this person right here is kind of walking really fast with this bag here. Who knows, maybe they robbed a bank or something. I'm just joking here. I'm sorry, person who this is. But let's say we want to track this person. What we could actually do is click a keyframe and we'll scroll ahead and click another keyframe. And we're gonna zoom in with our fingers here. Scroll over to this lady with her bag, who is probably a very moral person. And then as she starts to move, we are just going to follow her and as CapCut just auto places a keyframe, we can scroll ahead a bit and scroll down a bit. Scroll ahead a bit, scroll down a bit. We're just keep, gonna try and keep her as centered as possible. Just every little bit, we are going to try and keep her at the center of the frame. There we go. And we're just gonna keep repeating this process till we get to the end of the clip. And now we have this effect. North normal, boom, we have locked onto the target. She's making a break for it. We need to follow her. Oh my gosh, it's Jason Bourne. So a very fun effect, especially if you film something and something interesting happens in the background that you wanna track around, you can use keyframes to be able to do something like this. But the real key is to click the subscribe button down below and click on this playlist to learn more things you can do in CapCut. Come on, you watch this video all the way till the end. I've done so many CapCut tutorials that are gonna add a ton of value to you and that's also why you should click that subscribe button oh